This is Tommy Chong, man, and this is Wake and Bake with Captain Hooter. It's Captain Hooter. Hello. Dzień dobry. Bon dia. Dobre utra. Dobre utra. It is our third Good morning. Good morning. We look young and jing. Buenos dias. Hello. Everybody online looking good. Sawadee krab. Gunaiden. Dobro horanku. Bon dia. Kumoron. Habari a subuhi. Good morning. <laughs> hola hola everyone hooter here dude i'm back in amsterdam and i'm back in amsterdam for an incredible interview with one of the true legends in the business uncle stoner no 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 no, no. he's just here partying with me hey what's happening uncle stoner <laughs> hey many blessings brother many blessings you got me off course because you know? I know exactly what we're about to uh, talk I about. I know. And it's not me, although I've known this guy, this gentleman, for over 20 years, and he's an amazing man. So I'll let you continue, my friend. Well, there you go. But, dude, first of all, I want to tell you how killer. I love your outfit. That is, like, the greatest dab outfit I've ever seen ever. Uh, thank you. You know, what it is, is the cannabis goes in the back here. You load up the fresh green cannabis. It goes through an automatic thing. It presses it, then comes up into a tube that heats it up, and... Fills me up with all this nice organic <laughs> rods and smoke. Oh, God. <laughs> future, Only you. Know, you. Dab suit, the dab suit of the future, you know? <laughs> You're ahead of all of us Seriously, once no. again. Dude, so this is incredible. <laughs> we have an opportunity today to talk to one of the real true legends in the industry, and that is Ben Dronkers from Sensi Seeds. Dude, this is an amazing interview. We're going to enjoy this. Check out what Ben's got to say. He knows everything about everything, including about whether or not you're going to be able to get into the coffee shop if you come visit Amsterdam. So check out this interview, and we'll be back in just a few minutes. Hola, hola, everyone. Hooter here, coming to you very high, very live, and very humbled today. Uh, I, we're, last week, I brought you the, the CEO of the largest dispensary of the world, and today I bring you uh, the man, the legend, the king of uh, the largest seed dispensary in the world. Uh, he is a legendary leader, innovator, freedom fighter, uh, a lifetime award winner. Uh, again, I'm, I'm so honored. We have so many different things to talk about. Mr. Ben Dronkers, how are you, sir? I thank you. You make me shy, you know? <laughs> oh, dude, you're... <laughs> No, I, was, I, was I was I was telling my friend yesterday, I said, if there was if there was a Mount Rushmore of weed, you would be where Abraham Lincoln is. <laughs> well, it's, uh, it's a long way back. It's not yeah. that long, but <laughs> it's quite long. Time's yeah. moving quick, though, isn't it? Yeah. And, you know, you see all these guys who stand with you on the barricades before. They're leaving the world by one by one. And uh, I miss them, you know. We had a good time also. It was hard, it was uh, fighting. Uh, cops and robbers always uh, with one leg in the prison with one out, sort of. Yeah. Because yeah. they, you know, but things are changing and that is, that is very nice to see. Yeah. It's, uh, well, <laughs> the cat is out of the bag, yeah, they say. <laughs> well, you yeah, and I mean, back. And you, I, I, I know that you have a lot of uh, uh, roots and, and people involved in uh, the Malaysia uh, continent area there and in Thailand, and Thailand just went ballistic. And I, that was one of my first questions for you is, can you give me some firsthand feedback on what's going on in Thailand right now? How's Pattaya Beach? Has it exploded? It is uh, it's very interesting because n nobody ever expected it. My son, Alan, he lives already 15 years or 17 years in Thailand. And he is a teacher on two universities uh, in, in Thailand and one in Laos. And that is, he teach cannabis. And they did do that already for about three years or what? Three, four years. And they're gonna give him in September or December an honorable doctorate. 
probably given out by the, the queen, or maybe we don't know. We, wow. you know. But anyway, it's, it's, and he did a lot of work there. He really was uh, involved with all kinds of groups. All kind of Thai groups came here also, I think from the government, some officials, uh, they came here to, to see my, even the museum in, in Amsterdam, they see my grow room here from Sensi Seeds um, and they see Hempflex, you know, my hemp company. Yeah. So they were quite impressed and they, see all, they saw all the possibilities because, um, yeah, well, like 30 years ago, 30 more years, we say all these things, you know, we, what, what this plant can do. And you always were the idiot. We, are, we were the idiots, you know, the dope heads, uh, you know. But it, it was all correct what we did, you know. And um, Jack Harrow was a very close, good friend of mine. Um, I never went to the States because I couldn't go there, but I'd met him here many times. And the, 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 the dreams and the ideas were there, you know, and, and that we, 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 we we got it from the history, actually. Most of the, the, the things in the history come, come back now, you know? So that is, uh, that is the interesting part of it. But it was a long way. It was a hard way. And uh, the, I'm happy that I put my money where my mouth was, you know, because uh, with the hem company, we did for 27 years, not much. Finally, now with the CBD on a couple of years, we making some profit there and then COVID came again, you know, so, but we managed because the seeds are still doing quite okay. And even with COVID was nice. A lot of people start to grow, you know, so yeah, the seeds was, the business was good. So we were able to pay all the people the, the, the monies and all the workers uh, gone, were at home, but we could do the salary. So that's, everything is okay. Yeah. And you know, I was you're mentioning this CBD, and and you know, it's funny because you have two the two pieces, but you can't put them together, right? You still can't put the CBD and the and the THC together. No, in Holland cannot. No, yeah. in Europe right. you cannot. But there, it is around where that you can buy it in many places. Sure. It's, but I mean, in the United States and in Canada, it's one of the biggest sellers, especially in in in. Uh, liquid formats, you know, in droppers, it's yes, like two yes, to yes. ones and three to ones are like the boom right now, uh, yes. especially for the senior market. Yeah, I know. I, I heard about it, but it's here also. Yeah, but it's all illegal. You know, all the things what I do for the last uh, forty years is all totally legal. Yeah. So I always adapt to the law. And, uh, and you know, that's one of the brilliant things about you is is you know you you made some very interesting career choices and maneuvers during the course of this whole process, and one of them is when you you made the 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 very you know intelligent decision like boom here's what I'm doing I'm going straight seeds and and you already had all of the groundwork and you had already done all the work so you were in perfect position. Well, it happened that I was in jail. You know, they picked me up a couple of times uh, for possession, and then I started to study the law. And and then in the treaty from 1961 in New York, it says seeds are excluded. I read that in the law. So in, in the Dutch law, it says the same story. So I went when I get out, I went to a very bloody expensive uh, expert in agriculture, a lawyer, and I said, well. I want to grow hemp seeds, you know, from cannabis seeds. And I think it's legal because it's exempt. And it took him two, two weeks, the lawyer, and then it cost me quite, he was expensive in, because I didn't have much money at that time. But he, he came back and he said, yeah, I think you're right. You're allowed to grow seeds. So right away I had a, a small greenhouse and I, I did on growing already before but then illegal, but then I went to the greenhouse and I go to the police station in, in the village and I say, well, I'm going to grow, grow cannabis seeds. Oh, How yes, oh, yes. Yeah. They're, they're laughing, they're laughing. And they came to, to drink coffee. They come to see you know, a couple of times yeah. and just drink a cup of coffee and look at the plants. And then there's also an agricultural rule. You have to uh, register as an agricultural seed producer. 
So we did that. My son Alan did that. He was not yet 17, I don't know, 16 or what. <laughs> and the same story, they start laughing, you know, but the form was there and it was so we were legal and we, we were legal without anybody knowing that. And that took about 10, 11 years and then other companies uh, figured it out. And, uh, yeah. and all the people, we, you know, a lot of people used to work with me in the, in the shop in Amsterdam, started their own seed business. So sure. This but by, is then, by then you already had too big a head start though. You were already out there. And, right. and, and am I correct at the last count, you're over 500 different cultivars, 500 different seeds right now? It's, it's uh, around a thousand now. A thousand, a thousand. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you think, how you can, can you get them? You know, I, myself, we had about two, three hundred. And then I, uh, I met already years ago on a sort of fair in somewhere in Germany, a congress about cannabis and, uh, and I meet a guy from the Pavilov Institute, that is a Russian institute who preserve all the seeds from all kind of all kind of seeds. So because Russia went divided, right, and changed a lot, and so they cut the a lot of seeds that were in that collection. They cut it out. So this guy came years later, you know. To me, I don't know, it's about, I don't know how many years, I don't remember, in years, eight, 10, 12, I don't know. But he came to me and he said, well, Fabio Love is gonna stop with the hemp seeds, cannabis seeds, are you interested? And he told me also that already a couple of other guys, I know I don't mention them, but they went to him and he gave them some seeds from the, from the Institute, but he never see them back. <laughs> so, <laughs> I paid him, you know, and when I paid him, he brought a lot of seeds. And then he had this, but what his job was, he was collecting seeds also for the Institute. So he had no more job, but he, he loved collecting because he loved traveling all around from the North, from Russia to near to Turkey and China, I don't know where, and he collected them. So he collected all these land strains, different strains, and I got them, you know. <laughs> It's beautiful, but it's it's also a uh, sort of panic because it's a lot of work to, to preserve them. So we're working hard on them. We, we make extra small uh, grow cells so that we can, we will be able to, to keep them okay. Right. Now your first seeds, the very first ones you, you had were from Pakistan or were those the first ones you were selling? No, the, the first seeds I grow, that was from Pakistan. From Pakistan. And yes. how would you compare that, both that very first one with, and, and, not, and I know that we're talking about difference of lights and soil and all these different things, but I mean, just from the way you remember it for how you remember something excellent today compared well, to the, the lockdown kush that you have today. Well, the funny thing is that we were used here in Holland mainly to African grass um, in, from Indonesia, some, a lot from Africa and South, South America, of course. And it was always pressed and it was always a bit dry and didn't smell much, you know. So we, we were not used to real grass. So the first grass I grow with my friend uh, wasn't that good, you know, it was from seeds from Colombia or whatever, I don't know, uh, I forgot. But that when I traveled to, to Pakistan, I did that anyway, for I was in textile at that time. Then I started to, to look for seeds, you know, and also I met, I go for hashish also because I like the hash. So I went in the mountain and go to the, to the farmer who produced hash. And he showed me a lot of different good stuff, you know, and, and, and it teach me before that if you smoke the first time, you say, well, it's okay, you know, but not so good. Second one, oh, is a bit better. And then you know, slowly they bring you the best. So I bought some of the good stuff for myself. And then also the, the, the guy told me that, hey, uh, some Americans came here and they want to have seeds. And, but he said they didn't have them that time. You know, he, he said he didn't want to sell them to these guys. And, but are you interested? And I, right away, of course, you know, and that's how I bring my first 
Pakistani seeds from, uh, as, as I recall it, from Quetta Valley. And it was amazing. Uh, right away, it was a, a, a nice variety. You can grow it right away. But of course, later on, we crossbreed it with some things. And then we, we could select the real good stuff out of there again. And that's, uh, I was working that in the beginning with Neville Shoemaker. Neville, he had the original seed bank. You know, nice. and, and that he's a, one of the best breeders I ever met. Uh, and he worked together with my son for years, my son Alan. And uh, well, they did a good job. You know, they did uh, some really good things. Was Neville and, involved in the creation of the, the the your cultivar, the Jack Hare? No, no, he, he was he was no, he was there, but also already my son Alan. He was working on that because it never left on a certain moment. Uh, with the Jack Hare, I don't, I'm not sure he was. Yeah, he was still there. I think mm -hmm. he was still there. Would you say that it, that would is is that your most well known? Is that the best selling of all time? Well, top three. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's of course it's one of the best. Let me put it this way. It's. Uh, is my favorite also, and it's also in the uh, officially in the, the, in the Dutch medical cannabis from, from Pedro Crown. They started with uh, with my seeds. That was the first, uh, well, the, together with uh, James Burton and uh, uh, Michael De Witt, which, uh, also two early medical growers. Mm -hmm. And then Bedro come, they start with Jack Herrera. And uh, that, that, to me, they still have the best weed. Yeah. They say that they, they put the name out, you know, this, of course, they don't put the name in. But uh, I got it on the, I, when they ask for the license, they give me a copy of the, of the form. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> so they have to present it like that. That is yeah. where you got the seeds from, of the sense you see Jack Herrera. So it's, you know, it's fun. It's funny because I've smoked that cultivar in uh, six different countries now, and, yeah. and and it's a little bit different everywhere you go. But of course, of but course. you know, there's something about there's something about uh, uh, being home in Amsterdam and smoking it, and uh, uh, I really, you know, I it's still one of my absolute favorite. I was going to tell you about something. I I was at uh, an event uh, about a month ago in uh, here in Lisbon called uh, Can of Portugal. And one of the co-speakers with me was Dan Herr. And uh, one of the things that we were talking about was this. And I'm, I, I, I know that screen gets weird, so I'll do my best to get it up here so you can see it. Hi. It's called Abstracts and it's an all natural terpene called mm. All Natural Jack. And this, it was done through uh, uh, through one of the, um, uh, 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 the, the machines that scans down to the nano size and then breaks out all of the terpene profiles and then creates this from that. And wow. so this is supposed to be the closest thing because this was actually from Dan's garden all of, right. Jack's, of Jack's cultivar, right? So it's supposed to be, and I have to tell you, it is one of the best smelling things. I, I told him, I said, you should take this and make it as an aftershave. It oh, is what my wife loves it. It's one of the most amazing. And while I was there, he says, I do that all the time. And he said, yeah, yeah. <laughs> who yeah. would have ever thought? Who would have ever thought? Do you, do you think Jack would have ever thought that we would have gotten to this state? Well, not directly like that, but together we had ideas for the future that's it's amazing um even the you know the idea that he always say hemp can save the world and i was doing hemp already you know? yeah. and i said hey man, you know hold on uh, uh, jack people don't believe us already and if you're gonna say hemp can save the world they will find us more cool, cool you know right. but uh I, I, it's true it's true it's that is what it can do you know, it, it, he was he was great marketing for you. Well, it's, it, we we were close friends, and, and 
one one of his book, you know, he, he put the the challenge for uh, first it was uh, hundred thousand that if you're wrong, you know, if if people have to stop cutting trees and stop with fossil fuel, there's one plant who can do all a lot of things. What you can do from trees and oil, and that's hemp. And hundred thousand, if you prove us wrong, nobody ever comes. Some funny people, but. And I even raised it to, it's on the book also, on, his, on the back outside on this book, we raised it to 250, I think. And even here for my political, in the, I go to the parliament one times with a question and I offer them a million, but ne they never come, yeah. you know, because yeah. it, it, is, it, is a, it is what it is. You know, this plant is, is a wonder. I just have a new book out actually, um, Weed of Wonder. And it's it's amazing. From it's all about my collection. Um, oh, excellent! I don't know. I got maybe I got it here around. I asked oh, for fantastic! It. You know, I was going to say because we were talking about hemp. You put your money where your mouth was. Behind, you know, it's one thing to talk about it; it's something else to actually do it. And you've got two different companies: Hemp Flax and Thermo Hemp. And both of those, in kind of slightly different ways, are doing are are actually making talk, putting the action to the talk yes we started uh, nearly 30 years ago maybe it was already 30 um and what happened is that i made a lot of money with the seeds you know and i'm not uh, more marijuana crazy than money crazy so <laughs> uh, and, and the hemp was all in our mind in our, in our talking in our in our soul we believed in it so I got money on the bank, and then I read in the newspaper there was a flex company, bankrupt, small flex factory. So I did well. Flex and hemp is quite similar kind of uh, plan to to decorticate. So I thought, well, let's let's see. So I went there and bought the factory. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and then and, and the same year we started to to grow hemp with a couple of farmers. And it was fun. It was from then on. It was, it's like an addiction, you know, to work with him. It's beautiful, mm -hmm. but it cost twenty-seven years. It cost money, you know. It, right. I put millions and millions in it, and they put me in jail for it. They, the police came a couple of times. There was nothing wrong, but for the for the hemp one, for the hemp, not all, no, for pure for the hemp. We had, you know, we had about six thousand acres, so on a certain moment, and they. They get confused because they, you know in the beginning they came over with airplanes oh, okay. and making fo <laughs> making photos and even with a balloon you know to go, to go slower and lower. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and they, so they they couldn't believe that this guy you know those days I also had coffee shops so this guy is a smoker dope head seed company and coffee uh, you know that is that have to be wrong <laughs> that yeah. is not him. They say, right? and they're, and they're all uneducated. So that's that's part of it, you know. And and speaking of that, you fixed that problem too because you created a cannabis college. <laughs> it is even even more funny because the banks never helped me, right? Right. And you can bring money to the bank, but you cannot borrow nothing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and I'm always fighting to those guys. And I just tell you that my book, you know, the Beat of Wonder. I send it around to all the politicians here in Holland. So all the politicians in, in, the, in the chamber, in the Senate, or how you call it. Then also to the whole city council of Amsterdam, the city council of Rotterdam, also the European Committee on, on Sustainability. I send them also all the books. And for all these years, I'm, I'm telling the story about him. And now they're coming up with, in, in the European Committee that all the things we said in, and what you can see in the book from Ed, from Jack and what you can see in the museum, now they're promoting it. The European community come up now with, hey, we're going to do this, you know. Uh, hemp is, is great. So they, there is a change also concerning hemp because we lost in the beginning the farmers have subsidy on it. They took right. it away. They took yeah. 80 percent of the subsidy, they took it. And then there's still a little left, but not enough, you know, but uh, the, the thing is, they're waking up. They can the cat is out of the bag because they see what happened here with the, with the farmers in the moment. We have demonstrations. Uh, they cannot have so many cows anymore. They're not allowed to have that anymore. So it's, uh, 
it's a whole change, agricultural change, what, what's happening. A sure. transition, they, they call it transition, uh, energy transition, and this agricultural transition. But finally, they see that there is only one plant sustainable. Right. You know, on, on a big on a big scale, right? and, and hemp doesn't need pesticides and insecticides. So that is that's the only one. There's nothing else on, on a large scale. You know, and don't don't talk about biological veggies. Yes, you can buy that, but what we do with hemp is, like I said, it's it's a lot, and then it, and in the future it will be so much more uh, that of course they they have to take the rules. They have to take it. The seeds are superfood, you know. The oil is superfood. What we make with Tamohan, we make insulation now. That is amazing. Uh, I was in the factory for the first time uh, two weeks ago, and I cried, you know, because I see you see this big uh, flap of uh, insulation. And if you and then we were in a fair in Berlin, and we had two samples: one of hemp and one of glass wool. And we have some thermometers under it, so you can see the temperature. And then we have heat lights on top and beam it. And then the surprising thing that the glass wool right away took all the heat. So it, was, it is not heat resistant much. The hemp stayed on 35, 36 degrees, while the, the glass wool already was on, on the yeah. on plane. So wow. it, it's, wow. what we always do in Europe, we want to insulate for the heat, for the cold. But actually, it, it insulates even better for the for the heat. It insulates the same for the cold. So it is so many, so many, so many, many uh, advantages on, on this product. It's amazing. And and now since we have this factory, the price was about ten years ago. It was three times the price of normal insulation. Now it's only thirty percent more expensive. So. The only problem is always transport now is, is getting expensive also. So there's always challenges here and there to overcome, but until now we did. Sure. You know, I, I've asked several different people now from uh, from Amsterdam and from the Netherlands, if I, if I could, the, you know, your, your mayor's insane. Uh, some of the crazy things that she said is, is so ridiculous. If, if there was just a magic wand is handed to you right now and poof, you are now in charge. Nobody, you don't have to be questioned. What you say goes. You're now in charge of the Netherlands and the cannabis, the hemp, and all of those decisions related to it. If you want to be bold and if you want to make a couple other changes while you're here and you've got your magic wand about social changes or anything, you can do that too. But if you want to, just stay focused on the cannabis part. What would you change? How would you fix this so it would work perfectly forward for generations? Well, it, concerning the marijuana, if you call it like that, you know, the yeah. bar, um, and all the, all, whatever they make from it should be totally legal for everybody. License, no need, you know, for what? Uh, on the other hand, I realize that hemp is more important than marijuana for the world. i give you an example. We have in, in in Holland, we have a factory, and we produce there about 3,000, on this moment, 3,000 acres of hemp. Mm -hmm. And we, we grow also in, in, in Germany, and we, got, we have a factory also in Romania, uh, where we do about half of it. Uh, but next to 30 kilometers from us, they have a, an electricity, how do you call that? Generator? Uh, uh, compound, you know, they burn, they burn, uh, uh, wood to make okay. electricity. How you call that? I, my English. Uh, I'm sorry. A furnace. A furnace. So, uh, I don't know. Okay. You, you tell me. <laughs> well, they, <laughs> so they. But that, what they do, they import wooden pellets, wood pellets, from the north of Canada and North America. Wow. They're taking their forests, that this ancient forest. They cut it, mm. grind it, make, dry it, put it in pellets ship it all the way over to, to Holland. Mm. That is, and then they make electricity out of it and they call it green electricity. Yeah. <laughs> sustainable electricity. It is yeah. not sustainable at all. It's totally opposite. But in the same, in the same compound, they can burn hemp. 
So if they do that, you know, the whole node of Holland can be full of hemp and we have, well, not the whole full of it, but you can grow a lot of hemp in Holland and Germany to supply this electricity. They don't want to know it. And you know what? I know the price of a ton hemp when, when dry. I have no idea, and I tried to find out already for years, how much they pay for the wood pellets from Canada and America. I wonder how much that costs, because they have to harvest, they have to grind it, they have to dry it, they have to ship it. It's, it's, it's insane. And with us, the, the farmers are next to the, to the electricity compound, so they can deliver it right away. That's crazy. So it is, and that is, so those things are insane. Insulation, the same, you know? We have this insulation, and now people are making insulation with glass wool and rock wool. And I'm sorry to say, but that is the new asbestos. You know, that is, is not healthy. I know that anybody who worked with glass wool before, you, you can still feel it, you know, how terrible it feels. And yeah. we, we, we used it because we want to keep the cold out in the hall. So, but if you, you can put a baby on, on the hemp wool, you know, it's, it's like, uh, it's natural fiber. So it's, it's amazing. And that is what they do now in Holland. They have subsidies for insulation. And they have also this pure foam, maybe you know it, that is this foam that they explode. They put it in the houses, you know, <laughs> and the only the chemical smell of it is, is amazing. So you know, I, I, I still remember Jack, Jack had a formula. And if, I'm trying to remember if, it's, if this is correct. One acre of hemp equals four acres of trees, of bio, bio trees. I don't know the figures. I don't know if, he, if the figures are right, to be honest, because there are conflicting figures. But yeah. trust me that- uh, it, Something like that. It is <laughs> nearby, nearby. <laughs> you, know, it, you have to remember, you have to remember that the, 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 the three, months, three months that hemp grows, a forest has to grow 12 years. 25 years, 12 years minimum. So, and in, in, in the same year, you know, when a full grown forest give his oxygen off and take the CO2 up, hemp do the same. So it's, you know, you do it. So, I mean, you're, 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 a, you're a wise man and, and you've been around a long time. And the, uh, you know, the, uh, every time I, when you talk about this with, with younger people, they go, well, why? Why is that? Why is that? And you've been around a long time. You know why, right? Do you have, are you got a good reason or no to know why? <laughs> uh, you know, you know I, the, the funny thing is that you say that because I always say, said that with politicians. I used I used to be a lot of in the radio and on television. They asked me many times, but every a few times I had a, a minister of agriculture. And then I say the same to him. I say, why is it forbidden? They don't know. They don't know. They don't know why it is forbidden. Yeah. And when you say Enslinger and the whole story of what happened, they don't believe it. Uh -huh. One of the beautiful stories that Jack told me, I always have to think about it, mm -hmm. that he, once he talked to a senator, uh, I don't know the name, then Aaron probably know it, but he talked to a senator and he said to the senator, what do you think that ropes were made of, you know, 400 years ago? And the senator say, nylon. <laughs> <laughs> and what are the sails made of? Nylon, yeah, but yeah. 400 years ago, nylon, you know? So it was so funny that this, the ignorance is quite high. And, but if you tell me why they stopped this, I don't know, I don't. Yeah. I don't understand also. I think it's, um, they never helped me with hemp. Yeah. They never, they, they took you know, stuff to the, you know, they took, they took everything, they tried everything to stop me, trust me in that. And yeah. I, we were on my knees, you know, and we stand up and go again. So they declare us bankrupt. They declare that we did fraud and all this shit. Nothing was true, but it was in the newspapers and customers run away. Finally, we had customers and then, you know what it, it was general and you know the common the common belief i think uh, to people in the united states is that um now through research and through historical uh, you know records uh you know that william randolph hearst 
you know, the guy who was the newspaper baron and owned yeah. all of those yeah. those trees, uh, you know, was basically the one who was who was, you know, started the whole, you know, marijuana madness and and all of that was he was behind all that shit. Uh, one guy. Right. And and because he had the ability to market to the world, he implanted these thoughts and these seeds into everybody's grandparents, which went to the parents, which is why we're still living with that remnants today. Um, is because of this one guy back, you know, uh, so long ago. Yeah, but the same thing still happened now in Romania and, and even in Holland. They cut in trees like unbelievable. And they, you know, we should plant trees, but they're cutting it. And my hemp factory in Romania is next to a big wood pulp uh, factory. They make the, how do you call it, these big wooden plates. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the name. Okay. But they press these plates from wood chips, you know, they, so they, they, and when you go there, you see not thousands, but I don't know how many thousands of trees laying there. They doing like six, seven hundred ton a day, you know, sure. grinding how's, trees. How's grinding. Germany on that on that kind of uh, attitude? They seem much more progressive. I don't know. And to be honest, I I, I don't know. But the, I, when I was I was surprised when I see that factory who who make that place. They do so much, you know, because even we we tried with a few hemp farmers, if they can make them from hemp. And they say, but yeah, well, how much you got? And we said, well, maybe together we have a 3000 ton, you know, that is to me 3000 ton. And yeah. they say, for us, that's it's too little work. Then we have to change the machinery and only for a few days work. What? Mm -hmm. you know? So it's not even a week work, they say. So mm -hmm. they didn't want to do it and it was too expensive. And then for us also, because transport was just the idea to, to do this. And now I'm happy to see that in America, they make already beautiful wood boards. You know, this, you see this for, for the floors? Yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. There are so many products and so many new applications and so many new everything. We, we, I, I mean, we've been talking about all these great products, the inhalers. Uh, have you seen the inhalers? It looks like you have asthma. And yeah. 10 milligrams, 10 milligrams. Holy cow. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with uh, Chris Wren at, uh, uh, from Planet 13 in Las Vegas, and they're going to be opening up uh, cannabis lounges there, much similar to like an Amsterdam. But there, they're going to have everything. So they've got the full bar. It flows right into the same area where they've got a giant game room, which is right next to the dab room, which is right yeah. next to the restaurant where you can infuse yourself. If you want some tacos with some guacamole, you can put 10% guacamole or 20% guacamole. Uh, wow. That, that, that is our problem uh, because we innovate, you know, and we build all these factories up from scratch and only from the money from sense seats and the museums. Uh, we are, on the moment, we are the largest hemp CBD full extract, CO2 extraction in Europe. Yeah. Uh, that was how, you know, that finally we made money because the CBD is really, really good. Uh, but we, we lack of funds to step on. Uh, we just recently could buy an, extract, an extract, extraction factory, but we, we don't have the money for it. You know, we, 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 we just finally we have this insulation factory that is a, a huge factory. And we finally we, we, we could find it and it works now. It works very good actually. And um, so but I, we produce seeds a lot, you know, in Romania especially. So we can sell oil. We do that on a very small scale because we don't have the money to really go for it, you know. And like these big companies now on the stock exchange, mm -hmm. yeah, they got money and they they're losing a lot, and they have to find out, they figure it out how to do it, you know. And, yeah. and we, well, it's we, just <laughs> I, I'm imagining. I mean, it, it's almost it. It feels like like Amsterdam was an amazing cannabis thoroughbred in a horse race and was racing against donkeys and made the first lap around tw for 25 years, led the race, 
with and lapped everybody else. And then all of a sudden the donkeys got in shape and, and the jockey on the thoroughbred pulled the reins back on the thoroughbred. And now all the donkeys have all caught up in the race. And now in Las Vegas, as soon as they go legal, it's going to be, I mean, Barcelona to a certain extent, took it to the next level because you can drink alcohol and smoke inside many of those shops um, there. But we're about to see the future of what was started in Amsterdam in Las Vegas. Because, you know, they're, they've got money. In yes. That, that crazy yes. money. It's uh, nice. Oh, I'm, I'm excited uh, uh, for them. And, well, and you know, at the my, same time, I'm sad for all of my friends in Amsterdam that are still sitting there. Yeah, well, it's, 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 I don't think it's going to happen. I hope not. They, they want to have to, this rule that tourists will not, not be able to buy in coffee shops. I don't think they're going to do it. You know, it's, yeah. it's a stupid idea. And I don't think it's the mayor's idea herself, probably some minister asked it, you know. But um, no, the, the thing is, uh, even my friend Hank De Vries from the Bulldog, you know the Bulldog? Yes. I, they opened some coffee shops in, in America. Well, that's the plan. I'm not sure yeah. they do all that. But so when quite some Dutch people go to, to America and Canada now. Mm -hmm. Because they are, you know, they're ahead than, than Europe. On the other hand, we have Germany. Uh, we had some problems with Germany with, with seeds. Uh, in Germany, they say seeds are drugs. It's totally insane. But oh no! Uh, but uh, what I what we hear that is uh, probably by the end of the year, they come up with a new law, and it will be uh, quite legal actually in Germany also. And and you know, the, the, I always said if America changes, the world will change. Yeah. And that's exactly happened. And if you see what in Thailand happens, that's what we start with, is amazing. You know, people can do what they want. And that's sure. what it should be because this plant, and I see the, the pictures behind you, that's a, that is a social, cultural possession. Yeah. It is from us, it is from you, from me, from everybody. Not Monsanto, not anybody else. We, everybody can use it. And the other thing I can tell you, uh, I'm, I'm working on a court case with the European Committee uh, that according to the law, uh, the Treaty 1961 is, is also adapted in Europe, but the Europe rules and regulations say something else. Cannabis can be also an ornamental plant. And that's happened already in Austria, where Austria you can have plants, but you cannot take the buds, <laughs> to cut the bud and dry it. But the plant is legal according to the law. Okay. And then I tried to find it, but in Europe still everybody got a different law. But actually the law already since, since like 2017, it, we all have to adapt the European law. So I tried to do something there. Sure. We already two years with working on it. Did you see Switzerland just legalized? It is Switzerland. Think that's Oh, Switzerland is, is always ahead many times, but they turn it around also again. And there's the same thing in the you know, cantons, like the provinces, you know, like a state. So they have all every, in the, the different states, they have different rules, different licenses. And so they change and change and change, you know, because only 20 years ago it was legal. And then it's not legal again. And it's, so Switzerland is a funny country, but it changed in the whole world. And that yeah. is so, I'm so happy that, Thailand is the, the best example, the best. It's you do what you want. Now that's the that's the bit. And on the other hand, you know, <laughs> my son say, uh, well, you, you never know, eh? because in Thailand also they can say, well, maybe a lot like this or that plant and that plant. You know, it's it's also still a complicated uh, story, how you call it? Bureau for the bureaucrats, you know, you, either, yeah, you have to yeah. give fill in the form and you have to do this and you cannot do it. So, but it is free now there. So that's, uh, you know, it's a good, wow. uh, it's a good place to go. I'm still having, you know, incredible dreams about Patty at Beach. 
and you know going along that and the the lobsters that you can get there and the and and you know buds were everywhere and uh, you did, in those days there were rumors about the the some of the buds being dipped did you ever hear those stories or did you ever see any of those no but they, what what they did what i have seen before they dipped it in whiskey or what and dry it again but it's stupid it's not okay Okay. And I don't, I don't, I, I don't, you know, you have funny people in time of those. <laughs> it's crazy. It's now, you know, I've got some fantasy questions for you because you've been around, you've seen everybody, you've been everywhere, you've been in the hottest place at the hottest time, been at the top of the mountain. Um, what, what's one of your favorite celebrity interactions? Somebody that was a, a rappers or anybody that came that you got a chance to meet? Well, of course, Jack was the most important for me. You know? Yes. But um, Robert Clark, David Watson, Sam the Skunkman, uh, yeah, so many, Lawrence Chania, the Canada people, and what is his name? Uh, Jody and Emery and, and her husband. Jody uh, Emery and Mark, yeah. Mark, yeah, and Mark. Um, so, but so many. And Richard Branson, who opened the museum in West Barcelona. That's and the awesome. Barcelona, he said, yeah, that was nice. He came there. Um, uh, well, my prime minister here from Holland, he was uh, from the Christian Democrat Party and he uh, was totally in favor of legalizing cannabis. And he, he, he came with us, you can find it on the Cannabis Culture Awards, maybe on YouTube. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's interesting. Uh, Thermo Humph, hemp plants you can find on YouTube, of course. But yeah, yeah this, this, this prime minister, a few of them, Mr. Stoltenberg, you know, he was prime minister from Norway. Yeah. The father, the, the son, Stoltenberg, is now the head of NATO. So, it's, and this Mr. Stoltenberg, he came to also as a, for legalizing cannabis. And uh, amazing, you know, he was a very nice man. Beautiful That's people, awesome. Walter Stein, another politician. So many, so many, so many. It's too many yeah. to. And oh, Chris, and Mick, Chris, Chris and Mickey Conrad, I should not forget. I love these people so much. Chris and Mickey Conrad. Okay. Yeah, Chris, Chris, Chris Conrad. He, he wrote quite some books. Oh, fantastic. Okay. I will get him on there. Is there, I mean, you've been everywhere now. Um, you know, I was, I was surprised. I saw a picture of Conor McGregor out smoking a spliff uh, uh, in Ibiza, and I was surprised you aren't there. But and I, I see your passion here, but I mean, you, shouldn't you be retired and kicking back and partying on the island now? Oh, I do that already uh, more than 10 years, but I still work also, and you know, it's hard to to get away from it. My kids work in it, uh, but yeah, there's some, you know, it's, we, we got in totally now about 160 people working, so that's quite a responsibility, and then there's always, you know, there's always problems here, but you know, as a boss, you don't only count the money, <laughs> but you yeah. mainly handle the problems that comes here and there, you know, with COVID and all the things. Yeah. Well, and, and it's not like you don't have other like little side projects, like the two greatest cannabis museums in the world, one in Amsterdam and one in Barcelona. Um, can you talk a little bit about what made you want to start doing a cannabis museum? Well, actually, I, I, I did that with Ed Rosenthal. Ed is also, I forgot Ed, but Ed is a beautiful guy. It's amazing. Uh, not many people know, but he's also really, uh, yes, he's, 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 he's a fighter also. He's a barricade man. He wrote Absolutely. the forward to my book. Oh, nice. nice. Yes, yeah. he's the yeah. best. But uh, we opened it this sort of gate. I had to send the seat back next to it. And uh, then some coffee of people with Ed that was working on it. And later I hear other people on it also. But right away they got the warning that they're not allowed to open it. So, and they spend money in it. So I said, "Fuck off!" You know, they want to stop it and clear it out. And I said, "No, I, I buy it." So I bought the, the guys who originally wanted to do it with Ed and some people. So I I, I took it over, and uh, that's how I started. And in and they, the first five six years. Lost a lot of money also. Yeah. But it yeah. was no, it was, and then, uh, but it's also, I collected already. So I, I was already collecting 
items from everywhere. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, then it's become more and more, you know, it's-, uh, it's I, I was on the website yesterday. It looked like there was well over 2 million uh, people have been through those front doors now um, in, in, uh, in Amsterdam. And I, I found it fascinating <laughs> Because you know, I had uh, Jair on the other day, and he had his little—he's starting his uh, uh, museum of cannabis. Um, and Chris Wren and Laura Scheffler from Planet Thirteen in Las Vegas—they're doing a cannabis museum. So you were the innovator for all of these guys from the well, get-go. Yeah, it is nice. You know, it's nice to to see people. Uh, you know, that, that's also one of the reasons why I started Hemflex, actually. Because all the everybody had come with questions, right, to the museum, and everybody, until today, I think you went there, and I think you learned something. You you, you see something you didn't know, you know. A lot of things. A lot of people come in the museum, and I think it's a bit. It's for for whoppies, for for stone dope heads. But if you see the history, it is so beautiful. It is so amazing, and then there's all these things that people never knew, and that is what is. Um, in the history, we always discover new things, even from thousands and thousands of years old, you know. Uh, like in Israel, re recently they found a temple where they found the, the cannabis residue in the, in the altar. Uh, until, you know, books and uh, things that was written down, but nobody re really was reading it, you know. And that is interesting. So it is always something new. And then it's the same with hemp and the same with cannabis. And that is already the story of my life. Is, you yeah. know, there were, sometimes every week there was something new and then sometimes every month and sometimes five in a week or 10 in a month or new things you discover, you discover, you discover. And that is, is amazing. I and, love and your the, taste. I love your well, taste also, the way you specifically zero in on certain items. There's the painting that you have from 1660. So, you know, you went on a theme with that. And, and that yeah. is, by the way, I never heard of that painting before until you talked about it. And then when you talked about it and you go research it and look at it and you go, what a magnificent piece. How yeah. cool. I love well, your taste. Uh, no, but I like art, you know, art is like music, right? It's, uh, it's in, in you and it talks to you. And most of the paintings, it's all cannabis related. So the nice thing is like, I have this painting from uh, David Tanias the Younger. It's a very masterpiece really. Um, and that is actually my pension. That's my pension fund is the, the, the art in the museum. It's... I was good. Where did you get that? I mean, how did you get access to that? Well, I, I, I go around and, and you know, I, in my pension, I was able to save money and or I pay it to the bank and I make a life insurance or something like that, pension, in, you know, or I can do it for myself. So I can make a company, uh, a limited or how you call it, and that is taking care of my pension up to today. So now my whole collection is in the museum and uh, it, but it is my pension. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. and I can. I can take money out of it or not. Like I don't now because there's no money to, to get out. And if I take it out, most of the time it is to buy new objects again. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's it's beautiful. And then uh, you know, on this painting from David Tanias the Young, you see the guys. They're really stoned. You know, you can see the, it's like in a coffee shop. It's, you look in the coffee shop from 1560. You know, it's mm -hmm. 1560. So it's uh, maybe mix it up 1650 I'm sorry so but it's a coffee shop and you see they're smoking the pipe and on the, on the on the table is a piece of paper with some grass and tobacco in it and the seats are on the table because in those days that you find in literature in books again they mix the tobacco that was bloody expensive that came from I don't know where from India America I don't know the tobacco from America I think in those days so they have the tobacco, but that was probably expensive. So they mix it with grass, with hemp. And that is, they smoke the grass. They smoke the, they, no, hold on. The painting's name is, they drink the smoke. That's another painting, the dunes. You see three painters and they stone like shit, you know. <laughs> and and, and you, it's like a coffee shop, the same thing in, the, in those days. And I, 
have an old book in about the same period of time about herbs. And it, it mentioned the whole thing, what we, Jack and me, we always, we mention it. it so many useful things that this plant bring. So that is also why we believe in it, because we know it's, it was there already and it will be there again. And now it's coming and we need it like anything. And we know that and, and more and more people start. That is also with the CBD, we, we sell a lot and we have so much, so much people reacting, you know, we sell it also in Sensi Seeds on the, on the website. Mm -hmm. And so many people have positive reactions on it. Mm -hmm. And that is so beautiful because the CBD is a, a wonder of the weed again, you know, it's, it's don't forget, it's 10 years there, 12 years, and it's not so long, mm -hmm. but you know, so many people have so much benefits for sleeping, for pain, you, you know, it, it is, if you don't know it, you guys looking at this, try it, you know, mm -hmm. but try the full spectrum CO2 and not, not the, because the, they have also the concentrate, how you call that, mm -hmm. isolate. Yeah. Yeah, I say, yeah. Stay away from it. I'm sorry to yeah. say that. Yeah. Well, isolate from CBD is probably not healthy. There is a big research going on now with AIA, the European International Hemp Association. I was one of the founders there from that group. It's a huge group now, and they do a research for 1.2 million about the toxicity of CBD. And the results are not totally yet there, but it looks like this full spectrum is totally safe, but this, the, the isolates looks like you're not. And, and to be honest, and I don't want to say something bad about people or, or, or products, but uh, it doesn't work. I hear so many people, they, they took some other CBD and then it is 30%, 50%. And it is only possible with, with, with isolate. So, and they, they they feel weird from it. They don't feel good with it. So it's, it's important. And uh, but the thing is, it, it is there. You know, it's just a, a wonder of the wheat again. And that is the yeah. THC, of course, and, and whatever the terpenes, what you mentioned. Yeah. Every time there is a, a wonder of the wheat, and there is, trust me, there will be more. There will be more. You know, we're going in so many wild different directions and i'm excited i'm excited for the future and, and to see what it all brings you know let me let me ask you i gave you that magic wand a little while ago and you did such a good job i'm going to give it to you again but now you can use it on yourself personally so now i'm going to give you two months you can go anywhere in the world you can take three of your cultivars with you and and one and one chunk of hash what are your three cultivars you're going to take with you and where are you going to go uh Anywhere in the world. Well, <laughs> money's no object. You can be on a luxury no, no, yacht. <laughs> I live in Malaysia. Yeah. Uh, I have I have a official legal uh, medical medicine here from Holland that is based on Jack Harrow. I told you before. That's the only one I can bring and I can take, and I'm sitting in the sand. You know? mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sitting with my dick in the sand, smoking a good joy. And, <laughs> and my pain is gone, you know, because if I don't, I have a lot of pain, trust me. Okay. And then there are some beautiful strains we got, you know, so, and I prefer the, the, the regular strains. And luckily now people start to realize that everybody wants to have fit, feminized, auto, feminized, auto, beautiful. But give me the regular strains and then go back to the high of a level. You have been missing a lot for a while because I, when I come back in Holland here, I smoke all these different varieties. Also, uh, what, is, what people sell in the coffee shop. Or sometimes I say, hmm, but if you have some sensi strains and I see, I went to my grow rooms again, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful material. And it's, you can smoke, you know, if you say three, and I, I can take 30 out of them, you know, if, if, I, if I would like. But I, like I said, I'm now I'm a medical patient, so I only can get it from the pharmacy. And that sure. is the only way I can bring legal to, to my... Wow, very wise. Uh, so so does that mean you've ha not had a chance to try any of the honey melon haze or the, helium, uh, the honey melon kush? 
listen, uh, my my son Ellen, he, he, you know, he's teaching in uh, in Thailand on the university, okay. yeah. and he's, uh, once in a while he's coming back here. And my second son uh, okay. Gio is here, and my third son is Ravi. He is doing the grow rooms now, the breeding now, and they going really, really fast. And it is. Uh, you know, I'm not. I don't come here so often anymore. So for yeah. me, every time I come here, I'm like, wow, wow. And then they, they give me some grass, and I say, wow, you know. Yeah. And, and I'm trust excited. me, I, I, no. But then they give me five, six bags, you know, and I don't know the names, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, I do. I'm coming back into. I'll be. I'll be back for the Jack Hare Cup on, uh, on yeah. September fifth. Uh, and uh, I'll be judging all that week, and I'm also coming back because you have the pumpkin spice, the honey melon uh, haze, and the Kush, and there's a cashew Kush, which is the one that really intrigues me. Which I I I I, I want to get a chance to to grab a all little right. sample. Of. All uh, right, I, I hope you find it because yeah. you know what? <laughs> you have to remember, guys, everybody, that Shakespeare already said what's in the name because you can go in a coffee shop or anywhere you know and they say hey this is uh, caballero this is uh, skunk this is this but it's in the name you know what they can put a name on any grass in a coffee shop they want so if they if you like jack Harrah, you know and you're gonna ask do you have a jack Harrah? of course they have but may mainly it's on the menu and then the popular strains are on the menu is it all real? I doubt it, but I hope some of the coffee shop doing really real, and that's uh, that's important. Well, you know, I wrote the Connoisseur's Guide to the Amsterdam Coffee Shops, and that was how I actually got educated. Um, it's one thing when you come and, and go visit a shop and get one cultivar. It's a different thing when you go to five different coffee shops and have five different cultivars every single day, and then look at them side by side. In no time at all, you'll realize that there's an awful lot of things there that are not what they say they are. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I wish I would have known that you had the Cannabis College going at that point, because I would have jumped over there. Uh, you were local. You were only a street away from me. I uh, Too bad. So are you, uh, how much time a year do you spend uh, in, in Europe and how much time are you spending in Malaysia now? Well, normally I come here for about two times, six weeks or one. Mm -hmm. two months and uh but with the covid it was not possible so i was here just in november and now i'm here again and i'm leaving in two weeks or three weeks so mm -hmm. symphonia yeah yeah that's a, what is that that's that's a new company in uh, in switzerland we partner with them and it's a good friend of mine mike tonioli he's a nice guy and i hope they're gonna make it because they in the process of having the license, and then we're gonna have a cooperation. Co what do you call it? Mm -hmm. That we work, we're gonna work together. So it's we we make that companies together. So here's the book. Can you see it? Oh, look at that! Oh, it's beautiful, dude. Look at that. And here you got this painters. Those are three famous painters. Can you see it? It's too yeah. much reflection, is it? That's okay. I'll put a picture up here on the, on the screen. See it? So everybody can see it. Okay. And they stone like they stone. <laughs> wow. But it, it is nice. And uh, uh, Robert Clark, he make also an introduction in it. Mm -hmm. But it's uh, about my collection, the museums, and there's a lot of information in it. And, uh, it's, it's, I'm, I'm proud of it. It's, it's a beautiful yeah. book. It's it looks really good. Great. Did you ever write any books before this? Uh, I did only one, and that's a long time ago, very small. Mm -hmm. that's, and I, I did that more for the politicians who give it out to the politicians than to the public mm -hmm. as, as a statement at that time. And then okay. I had one, one more museum book, but that is sold out now. We had, uh, we had it for quite a time. What's next? Are you planning on expanding out any further? And there's many, there's many ideas, and uh, 
the thing is, is, is always the funding, of course, you know, we, we, we work with the profit we make. And, um, but there are people interested in all kinds of things. And if there's a collaboration or working together with other companies, or there might be investors. And there was even an idea with Amflex to go to the stock market. But because of COVID and the stock stock market very low now, it's, it's we had we already in a pre IPO, but uh, then the COVID came and then it stopped. But you know, if 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 if, if we really that's I was on a congress in Berlin, and um, and, and, and I tell the people the same thing. It, 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 you know, from the small growers and the small farmers, it will be industrial. It has to be industrial if we want to give hemp food and hemp oil and hemp products to the people, we have to produce it. And that is, that is industrial. It's not on a, in your garden, you know. You, in your garden, you can grow your own seeds for food, you know, that's okay. But if you want to feed the world with some real good superfood, then you have to do that industrial. So that's why you see in America, they have these huge companies with billions of money from Corona and Canopy and Aurora, they're losing hundreds of millions. You know, they, they do because they have to figure it out. <laughs> Lucky we had 27 years or 30 years time to figure it out. We figured it out, you know, and they, they even came to us for seeds. They came to Hemflex and we sent seeds 30 tons to America, but they, they say, oh, we are so late, we have to send it by airplane. <laughs> Normally they go by ship, right? But they go by plane. And they bought a lot of land there. I won't mention the name of the company, it's maybe not nice. But they bought a lot, a lot of land and then they sold it with the seeds. And then they call us three weeks later, yeah, we need a harvest machine also. So we sell them a harvest machine and that go by ship and it was just on time. But then they figure out that they didn't need it because the hemp didn't grow them. They bought the total the wrong land. Oh, so that's a, that's a high price to pay, you know. So and anybody who wants to come to me now, they want to start with hemp. The first thing is how much money you get. And, mm. and if they come up with ideas, and, and then many times I have to tell them, I said, better don't, you're going to lose so much money because they don't even know where to sell it. That's how I started. We, we started to grow hemp and we don't know what to do with it. We didn't know what to do with it. Finally, we find that the horse bedding was okay, so we, we could sell it as horse bedding. And then it's, it's staggered, staggered, staggered. And then, then I had lucky one, one paper, one, I had 1,500 ton of fiber standing there. And then lucky a paper company from Turkey come to us and they bought it and they make cigarette paper out of it. So they all smoked it. They all smoked 1,500 tons of hemp. Perfect. You know? Amazing. And then later on, and automotive, Companies came. Uh, the fiber is in Mercedes, Jaguar, BMW, even Bugatti Veyron. And yep. on this moment, there, there is no negotiation with uh, the, the new the new Tesla. They're going to build in Germany, and they have already uh, some test uh, material from us from our hemp. I, I just was at the uh, Can of Portugal, and they had a Mercedes Benz, a brand new Mercedes that runs completely on hemp uh, hemp gasoline. And we, of, of course, of hemp oil can can drive, yes. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and on et ethanol made made of hemp, it's also possible, of course. But I, you know, it, it, like I said, it is uh, it, it has to change. And you know what? People don't most of the time don't understand with the whole CO two problem. You know, like here in Holland, we ha they have to cut half the cows. All the cows have to get out. You know because they fight too much. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and that is, it's bad emission, right? So, but the, the cows can eat the hemp also now, you know? So, and those farmers that instead of cows, they can have super food from hemp. So it's, there's a lot of agricultural things in the future that farmers, you know, they don't know because what hemp does, it takes up, the CO2 from the, from the air give us oxygen. And when we make insulation, we store the CO2, we store, it, we store it in the wood, in the products that we make out of it. And that is uh, beautiful. Then you have a zero emission, you know? You, 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 
you, you, you give the oxygen and only when you burn it, you take the oxygen again. So you always have a zero emission of, of carbon in that sense. And that's, that's beautiful. And they, uh, I'm happy that the European Committee for Sustainability figure it out now because they just sent me the, the, the report of it. And it's, it's it, what, what Jack and I, we, we were telling the world for years, you know, 25 years ago already. Now the European Committee put it yeah. nearly, yes. literally there. It's there, the whole story, what you can do with it and what, it's amazing. And the yeah. bank, my, my bank, uh, the Rabobank, I can call them, they even refused one of our a company who supply us and they wrote a letter to that company that they shouldn't do business with us. And we don't know why, we don't borrow nothing from them. And the same Rabobank, they have a newsletter for the, for the, the staff, for all the people working in the bank. Mm -hmm. In the newsletter, they talk about hemp, hemp is beautiful, and my company, Hempflex, is named as the future, you know? <laughs> but, but, but the same thing not allowed to work with us, you know, it's, it's, it's so it's, it's they, wake, they wake up, they will work. Up. Yeah. And it's nice, you know, that at least, uh, yes, but, but I can say to my, for myself is uh, a few things that when people say, yeah, you sell so much seeds, eh? and, uh, how about the people that had problems with it? They, they went to jail or police came. And I say, is that the problem from the seat or from the system? It's simple. Mm -hmm. Then there are so many people, Mark Emery is one of them, but so many, so much, so many seat people yeah. that started seat companies and stuff. They used to work with me. They started with me. And that is, I'm happy with that. You know, it's so many, uh, it's so nice to see that all this because a lot of people made money also with you know but for me the most important people can grow their own plant that is what it is that is what it's all about people should be free to put this plant in your garden or even in your house and you do what it what you want you want to consume it you consume it whatever you want it's this freedom because it is a plant from you and me a social, cultural possession or inheritance, whatever you call it. It is it's from us. You cannot say this tomato is only for Monsanto. Come on. Yeah. No. You know, it's. Uh, I, I think that uh, we're we're getting closer, and uh, you know, as every yeah. day and every year goes by, uh, your guys' words become, you know, like I said. Your faces go up on the top of the mountain. You were you were right so long ago. Uh, you know, we, we, we will simply fade away. I hope yeah. the museum will attract a lot of people. Please go there. We need your support. But you learn a lot more than you know already. And then you become maybe some so convinced as I am that hemp cannabis is a beautiful friend of us. It's beautiful. Well, and both of those museums are are absolutely spectacular wonderful wonderful experiences and there are great uh coffee shops and spots close by both of them that you can smoke up before you go over there in order to have a truly blessed experience right okay and if you visit <laughs> if you visit fancyseeds.com you know you see the seeds of course but you see also the cbd maybe you know we're trying to make a lower price for the so wait a couple of weeks but then the price I, I we try to make it a very nice price to have the people the experience can't ask for any more than right. that. kind sir thank you so All much right. for taking the time and nice uh, to meet you. i am sure that we'll get a chance to uh, interact again I'm, again i'll be back there in september uh with the jack Herrick up and uh hopefully uh you might be around still and we'll get a chance All to right. All right. I want to try that pumpkin spice. All right. Oh, yeah. All Thank right. You. Say hello to Bobby. Yeah? Bobby. Absolutely. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right. Welcome back, everybody. Captain Hooter here, here with Uncle Stoner. We're dabbing and smoking and partying our ass off here in Amsterdam.
Oh, it's, it brings me back, man. I love this VR Amsterdam world. Wow, but what an interview. Holy cow, the history behind this man. You talk about being revolution. Oh, I'm revolution with this suit. This man <laughs> has been revolution for years on this plant. Not just the cannabis THC plant, but the hemp plant itself, of course. I mean, just amazing, man, you know? Dude, I, fe I felt like an idiot because I told him, I said, you've got over 500 seeds because that was the last time I knew about it. It was over 500. <laughs> He has over oh, a thousand whoa. different kinds of cultivars now. Dude. Yeah, oh, yeah. A thousand. Amazing. Because he started back in the day. Back in the day, people came to Amsterdam because of him, Hank, and uh, a, merchant, uh, a man named uh, Eagle Bill. Not Eagle Bill, the one created Avery, but another one, Horse Marine Bill. Or Ed, Merchant Marine Ed, excuse me. They all mm -hmm. hung out together. They were kind of like the rat pack, if you think mm -hmm. about it, you know, the old rat pack, but of cannabis, you know. And that's one thing about. Ben, he's never lost his swagger. I mean, how how old is this man? And look how cool and fresh and just yeah. chill he is. I mean, he's like I, the Hugh Hefner <laughs> of cannabis. <Ooh>. Yeah. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. Well, listen, man, thank you for yeah. joining me. This was perfect. What an amazing experience. And again, you were instrumental in getting this interview with Ben Dronkers. And thank you, sir. Outstanding. Oh, no. Hey, it's my honor. He's an amazing man. I learned a lot through him throughout the uh, throughout the years, man. If it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't be around. Without his kind heart and being honest and, and true love about this plant and the people, he treated me with love and respect back in the day because there was some that weren't that way, but he always mm -hmm. was. And mm -hmm. I think I'm here today because one of the reasons is because of him, you know? Wow. So That's awesome. it's a good homage. I'm glad I got to come here. Many yeah. blessings, man. I'm continuing to get high and checking out Hampton's in the virtuality world. We're going we're gonna to go party. So we'll see you guys later on. We're going that direction. We'll catch you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs> it's Captain Hooter. Far out, man.